Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for another very special edition of Wow's Alive with our Olympic Impressions. And we're here with Karina Lee of Australia. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yes, how does it feel to be a bronze medalist? Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, it was kind of the, the goal um, going into coming around the podium. So to actually do that is incredible. Yeah. And it looks like you're in a hotel right now. Is that? Yeah. Um, I'm in a hotel room. Um, coming back to Australia, it's um, mandatory to complete um, 14 day hotel quarantine. So okay. uh, I think I'm in day day six at the moment. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I want to talk about the race and, and what you did, what you felt, what you saw. And I mean, man, the race started and the pace was fast. You know, Ashley Twitchell was out there pulling the pack. And what were you thinking of at that point in the first half of the race? Yeah, well, the first half of the race. I mean, my whole strategy was to, to go into the race, you know, sit around that top six so I can see any moves that are going to happen, adapt with that, but really put on the pace with about a kilometer to go. Um, I feel like the first, lap was fairly cruisy I mean we're just all trying to get into our positions and get into our strokes but the second lap I, I felt a real shift in pace and I think that's when Ashley was leading um, so that was a little bit of a shock um, you know I, I started picking up that pace a little bit to try and chase and I felt myself getting uh, a bit hot in that situation too so I had to be really conscious of that and I had to to stay relaxed and um, I just decided to then, <clears throat> sorry, um, hop in behind some people and let them do that, <clears throat> sorry, that chasing. And I think that's when I, I started to cool down and that's, you know, the, the pack all started catching back up again. So I was able to conserve a lot of energy in that that instance and, um, you know, those, those first four laps after that second lap were fairly fairly comfortable and I was just trying to concentrate on on getting all of my feeds in I think that's really important in the hot water um, and staying hydrated and I think I was able to stick to my plan fairly well I mean it doesn't always go to plan in open water swimming but um, for me I was I was able to stay there great great when you said get your feeds in what what were you drinking it did you take a whole bottle or what was your strategy around the feeding stations um, I can never get a whole bottle down quick enough. It's just not in my skills, but um, I, I fill them up quite a bit and try and get as much as possible in. Um, normally I only feed once or twice in a 10 kilometer race, but knowing that the water was hot and I'm going to need a lot of hydration, um, I prepared four feeds. Um, two of them were just pure electrolytes and then two of them were carbohydrate very high carbohydrates. Um, so I was able to take all of those feeds and I felt like um, it did help a lot, but I had also practiced taking that many feeds in training and, and everything. So I felt really prepared to do that. Ah, uh, great. And do you remember what, la what uh, lap you took the four feeds on? Was that like two, three, five, seven or? Yeah, um, it was after lap two after lap no after lap one after lap two uh -huh. after lap four and then after lap five got it got it I, I have a question I mean when you were coming in for the last loop lap six did you think anybody was gonna go I know that I know the feeding station wasn't that far off of the straight line tangent but it was a little bit off do you did you think anybody was going to go in and feed or you just knew that last loop was going to be a 1500 hard yeah, I mean, with it just being 1,500 metres, you don't really have the time to, to fall too far behind. Yeah. So for me, I thought it might have been a silly idea to feed on that last lap, but, but each their own. But, yeah, I just needed to get the best position I could possibly get, and I felt like I did, did not need a feed on that lap. Great, great. Now, in, that, in the second loop, when um, Ashley was ahead and the pace started mm -hmm. to pick up, um, did you ever, and, and you saw that you needed to pick up in your particular case, do you, 
uh, move your arms faster? Do you kick more? How, how do you actually pick up the pace? What, what's your strategy there? Yeah, my strategy, you'll, you'll see my stroke rate increase when I'm going a bit faster. Um, I try to stay off my legs um, until the very end, just so I can conserve a lot of energy in that kind of area. But um, I generally have a really, really high stroke rate. So I usually sit, I think, around the, the 45 to 48 when I'm okay. um, just kind of swimming in the pack. But then I'll pick it up to 50 or above when I'm, when I'm really moving. Really? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And what is your breathing pattern like when you're, when you're going at um, high pace? I mean, I think it changes a little bit in open water um, with sighting and everything, but generally I try to breathe um, three to the left and then do three strokes in the middle and then three to the right. And I just um, turn that, that over. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it was uh, a little bit unusual this uh in this race was the big gigantic red turn buoys. I mean, they had that giant thing in the middle. So it, I think you could see well or see from afar, but it was actually nice and wide and round. And I didn't see a lot of physicality around the buoys. Is, was that a correct impression? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was, you know, it was too big for anyone to really duck under the, the buoy. And so that, that created less chaos with people bumping into each other and coming up from underneath the water. And yeah, it just really wasn't as sharp a turn. So it gave us a lot of room to just, to just go around as a pack. Yeah. And I know you, you started very early in the morning and as the sun was rising, was there any point in the course where it was glary or you couldn't see that well because of the sun or was, was good visibility the whole way? Um. Yeah, the red boys really helped with the visibility. I mean, coming in towards the sun early on in the race, it was quite hard to to see, but that red that red boy just just stood out. So that was helpful. But going towards, if you were trying to look for the finish gate in those early stages, that was a bit difficult. Okay, okay. So that, walk me through when you were, you know, that last loop. You're coming in at the end of lap six, heading to lap seven you knew that this was a hard 1500. Was there anything in particular that you were, you were thinking of, you wanted, you want to be behind on the right side, left side. What was that strategy in your mind as you were heading into lap seven? Yeah. Heading into lap seven. Um, I, I knew that I needed to get my position really, really right. So I put on the pace a little bit going through the, the timing gate and towards that um, first boy. Uh -huh. Um, I think I, I worked my way up to about third position going around that boy. And I stayed on the outside then because for me, that's easiest to, to move around people on the outside. Um, and I just kind of settled in, um, behind, I, I actually didn't know who the girls were that I was behind. Um, and then I was trying to get, you know, my, my breath back and, and my stroke together and stay relaxed, um, ready for the final sprint, which I thought would happen with about a thousand to go. And, um, sure enough with, with a thousand to go, um, I, I saw Anna going, starting to go really, really strong. Um, and as soon as I saw her going really strong, I was like, okay, they're the feet I need to be on. Um, and I saw that she just went a little bit wider than the course. Um, that was kind of like a, just a split decision for me to, to follow her that way too. And um, it worked out to be a really good decision. I mean, it got us away from the pack and, and we were able to get some clean water to, um, to be able to start moving. Yeah. I mean, you know, personally, if, if I had to pick between swimmer A and Anna to go behind, given Anna's experience, <laughs> I think your, your selection of going uh, toward her path was, was the right one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, so, so now it's a thousand to go, but you still have two buoys to go around. Were you on the yeah. inside on those last two buoys? Were you on the outside? Walk us through that. Um, the, the first one that I went around, um, I was on the inside, um, but then we had, you know, Sharon work up next to me. Um, so then I was on the outside turning around the final, um, boy there and 
um, that was fine. It was very clean and I feel like I didn't lose too much there. And um, being on the outside gave me a bit of a more direct line to the finish gate because it was quite a little bit um, yeah. off course there. Um, but, yeah, it was that that end straight was was tough. It was very, very fast. Um, and I think for me it took a lot of um, positive self-talk to, to stay there and get me to the end. <laughs> positive self-talk. That's great. Like what can you – don't give us – your uh, secrets, but what were some of the things that you were telling yourself in your mind? I know it must have been painful. (laughs) It was really painful, but I was just kind of saying, you know, you can do this, like you've trained for this. This is how you train. Um, And then I I could see that I was in that top three and I was like, you know, how much do you want it? How much do you want that medal? So, (laughs) yeah. 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 Now you saw Anna, uh, ahead of you, you saw. I don't recall. Was was Sharon to your right or to your left, uh, coming into the finish? Um, coming into the finish, she was on my left. Your left. Okay. Now, were your eyes only on the two ahead of you, or did you have any eyes or fear of anybody behind you coming up? I didn't want to look behind me. I was solely looking in front of me, um, and and that's what I was focused on um ideally I was trying to to get around Anna um but she was just moving so incredibly fast um but I think you know I I gave it my all and I was trying to um trying to touch out Sharon at the end but but unfortunately I didn't get there yeah now when you finished I mean it looked like all of you ladies were just totally uh, you put everything out there I, I don't I don't know if any of you could have taken one more stroke. I mean, it, was that a correct impression? Yeah, it was <laughs> it was definitely a painful race. I was so exhausted at the end. Um, to be honest, I don't actually even remember finishing. Like I feel really? like I was just somewhere else. Um, but then when I actually did get to the other side of that that gate and you know, I was so exhausted, but it, it took me a while to like compose myself and realize what, what had just happened. And, um, you know, my first thought was like, Oh my God, I think I got a medal. And I was like, Oh, I wonder, you know, I wonder if I touch second or third and then, um, just seeing Anna there. And then the thought going through my mind <clears throat> was like, Oh my God, Anna won. Like she actually did it. And I just remember feeling so proud and so happy for her that, you know, she got there and I think she's very deserving of that gold medal. Yeah. Yeah. Now, at what point after the race did you realize you got a bronze? <laughs> um, I think it was, you know, when I actually got out of the water and I, I looked up at the scoreboard and I saw that, you know, that that I was there, I was there and I was like, oh, wow, that's <laughs> that's so incredible. And then I saw um, um, the open water performance manager um, from Australia running down with the phone. So I knew that it would have been my coach, JR, on the phone. <laughs> Felt like I held it together pretty well until I started talking to him and hearing how proud he was of me was, um, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. And we have a photo of you actually talking to him there. Um, it was caught on television. Do you, do you recall what your conversation was? Yeah. Um, he was pretty emotional on the phone, but he was just kind of saying like, you know, we did it. Um, he was telling me that I executed the plan to perfection and, um, he was just telling me that he was so proud of me. So yeah, it was special. <laughs> and then how was it? I mean, wearing, you know, the, the yellow of the, uh, the very visible yellow, I must say, of Australia standing <laughs> up on the Olympic podium, watching the Australian flag go up. What, what were some of those emotions? Yeah, it, it kind of felt a little bit surreal, but it was, all, it was also a really proud moment. You know, it's, it's really special seeing your flag going up and, and standing on that dais and, and getting that medal. And, you know, it's, it's a bit of a time for reflection too. And, and what, like the people that, that got me there and everything, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a really cool feeling. Yeah. And I mean, we have to mention that, I mean, you were part of a very, very powerful Australian women's team. I mean, <laughs> when you were on there, I think, wow, that was that, Australian team did really well. Did you feel a part of, of that? I mean, 
you know, everybody on that Australian team did, did extremely well. Was that a little bit of an impetus, a little bit of motivation for you? Or what did you feel? Yeah, I mean, uh, I definitely feel part of that team. And, and it's been an amazing journey that we've all had together. You know, we've been on, on camps together and, um, you know, trained extremely hard together. And um, being, being able to be in the stands for a few of their races was definitely a bit of motivation and it was amazing watching them um but at the same time I was like oh my gosh like they're on fire like (laughs) I've got to bring my A game (laughs) um so yeah no I'm I feel proud to be able to to add to those performances yeah. Now, um, what is your specialty in the pool? Do you consider yourself more of a 200 meter swimmer or more of a 800 meter swimmer or just a jack of all trades? <laughs> well, I always thought myself about a 1500 meter swimmer, um, but I have been able to work down to the shorter distances as well. Um, so I think at trials, I competed in the, the 200 and the 800 and the 1500. Um, and I was able to do PVs in both the, the 200 and the 800 and unfortunately fell a little bit short in the, in the 1500, but, um, and earlier on in the year, getting, getting a PB in my 400 as well. So I think, um, you know, working on that speed and in the pool, um, really contributed to, um, being able to finish the race in the open water. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you were charging at the end. I mean, that was, that was really, really nice to see. Now, we all know, we all <laughs> heard how warm the water was. And that's why you started so early in the morning. And 29.5 is what we heard. I mean, how was it racing in those really warm water conditions? Yeah, you know, it, it brings on a new challenge with the warm water. Um, but it, it's nothing that we didn't expect. Um, competing in the test event in 2019, I think the, the water temperature was 31 degrees then. So um, that's, that's kind of what I was preparing for. And um, I had the opportunity to be able to train in um, a heated pool a um, couple of weeks out from the Olympic Games to try and get myself used to that, that feeling of hot water. Um, and that was when I also practised you know, my feeding strategies and keeping, keeping my feeds down in the hot water too. Um, but I probably wouldn't say that I felt too uncomfortable in the 29 degree water, um, in Tokyo, not until probably the last two laps. Um, other than that, it was fairly comfortable, but yeah, definitely towards the end, it, I could probably say that it probably wouldn't have been able to swim too much further further in that at that pace anyway <laughs> got it got it when you say a heated pool are you talking about 30 degrees or higher yeah so um i i got to swim in a in a 25 meter pool that was heated um between 30 to 32 degrees oh. and i trained once a week in there for six weeks so it was um yeah it was it was good training <laughs> oh good training now <laughs> What were some of your toughest sets that you did in, in those warm water conditions? Um, I think, you know, we do things like um, we'd have a, a warm up set where we'd um, go a 600 and two 300s and four 150s um, on the 110 cycle. That was just to warm up. And then it would be something like, um, you know, 10, 10 to 12 400s um, holding a best average and then trying to spike at the end with like an 800 time trial or, you know, a couple of 100s time trial at the end there. Oh, brutal. And, and you, you train with Nick Sloman, I understand. Another very good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Is it just <laughs> you and him going at it or is it, are there a few other people? Um, there's, we have a few other people in the squad, um, some junior um, open water up and comers. Um, I also have um, another male that was at the Olympics from Hong Kong, um, William Thorley. Okay. Uh, so we have a good little, good little squad. Um, yeah, it, it's been really, really great to train with them and they've pushed me all the way. So it's been yeah. great. Uh, it, it, it was so great to see. And Paris is only three years away. 
do we see Paris in your future or are you hanging up with the ending with the bronze? I mean, I, I did. I, I said that I was going to retire in 2016. Okay. Um, and I'm still going. <laughs> I couldn't quite give it up then. So I don't, I don't want to plan my retirement. And I know that my body will, well, me and my body will know when it's time. But everything at the moment is, is so, so close. So I'm going to sit down with JR and, and take it step by step. But um, Paris is, is something that's definitely in the sights. And, you know, I, I've never been to Paris before. So okay. <laughs> I'd love to go there. <laughs> great, great. And we have to address you, you are in a hotel, you had to quarantine. I mean, how hard was it to train and, and even just be mentally prepared for an Olympics that we actually didn't know was even going to come off over this last year and a half, especially I understand as American, I mean, we have our lockdowns, but boy, in Australia, you really have some, some lockdowns. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it was difficult in the first instance hearing all the all the talk about, you know, the Olympics maybe being cancelled or, or postponed. But I think the hardest thing for me was when um, when they said that the Olympics was going ahead but Australia said that they weren't going to send a team and and that was really hard to hear. I mean, I just felt my dreams kind of shattering then. I, I mean, I was trying to stay as as positive as possible, but, and, and I knew that Australia was just doing it to, you know, protect us, but it, it was really hard. But then I think a couple of days after that, um, we heard that the Olympics were going to be postponed. So I actually, I actually got a lift from that. And that was definitely the, the better of the, the two options. So, um, so that gave me a bit of drive and, and I knew then that I had to, to stay positive and, and that I was going to give it my all. And, um, yeah, so I think the, the whole time it, it was just about, about that positive mindset and about having tunnel vision, but also taking it step by step and, and ticking off boxes as I go. Um, I, I'm lucky enough to live really close to a beach, so I was able able to to get out into the water um for my my daily exercise um so I was able to keep that that swimming up at least for a little while so I was very lucky in that sense um it definitely certainly wasn't like the training that I was used to or or that I needed to be doing but um as I said I felt really lucky to have that and I also um took up some stationary bike riding which (laughs) I actually think has has really strengthened my legs a little bit from what they had been. So, um, and and it was able to keep me somewhat fit. So I'm really grateful for that. And yeah, I mean, coming through this this last year, it was it was a uh, the you know the big final push. And yeah, I put my head down and I just wanted to make the most of of every opportunity I was given. Yeah, that's, that's so wonderful to hear. Really wonderful to hear. And, and I have to thank you for your, you know, taking your time out to, to explain about what you experienced in the, in the swim. Was there any point in that race where you got a little bit nervous? I know everything went to plan, but was there anything there that you thought, oh, no, I need to pick up the pace or I'm on the wrong side or uh, anything like that? There was any, any doubt ever entered your mind? I mean, I, I suppose like doubt comes in all the time and, it, and it's, I guess it's how I, I respond to that doubt and, and that's where the, the self-talk kind of comes in there. Um, as I said, with, um, you know, on the second lap where the pace picked up, um, that, that was a little bit of a shock to me and, and, I, and as I said, I, I did start trying to chase, um, chase that speed and, and chase Ashley down and, and that's when I realized that it probably it doesn't actually need to be me that's doing that. So that's when I was able to bring myself back. Um, but there's a lot of times in the race where you think, oh, I might be in the wrong spot or, oh, this is getting too rough here. But um, I was able to to either like remove myself from that situation or, or correct myself, which I'm really proud that I was able to do. Yeah, no, that, that it sounds wonderful. I mean, to be able to adjust 
on the fly and what you did, I think that's a credit to yourself, to the preparation that your coach, John Rogers, and your teammates helped you to do. And it's really, really nice. And uh, we wish you well. We wish to see you again in Paris. So, uh, and, uh, you know, you'll be, tra- hopefully we'll, we'll get beyond this pandemic and um, you'll be able to travel to South Africa, to the Middle East, to Canada and uh, all around. You're a great ambassador of the sport and we wish you well. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm definitely looking forward to, to traveling around again and competing. So yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Thanks.